Friday. We're here. We got a fall fashion DIY. I'm so excited. For those of you that are new, my name is Orly and this is the DIY designer. I do some really fun DIY fashion and home decor. I'm, I'm basically just like obsessed with customizing everything from the closet to the home. I really just want to kind of empower you guys to personalize everything that you have. That way all the beautiful things that you look at and you wear really sort of speak your language um, and represent who you are. So that's what I'm all about. This is a really fantastic fall fashion DIY that you're gonna love. This is great for beginners. What we are gonna do is a flannel upcycle video. Now I've got two DIYs within this video. The first one is sort of like a flannel mashup, basically. It's like taking multiple flannels, cutting apart the elements that you wanna use and re-piecing it together into a new piece. The other one we're gonna do is kind of like a 90s grunge drop waist like shift dress situation. Really cool, it's gonna be one flannel on top and one flannel on the bottom, but again, if you wanted more volume on the bottom, you could do two or three flannels on the bottom, whatever you want. Now, one quick note about materials. When you're buying your flannels or the ones you're going in your closet and grabbing, you wanna make sure that they're similar in like texture and weight. Don't do like a, you know, fuzzy, thick, really warm flannel and then like a plaid men's shirt. You want them to be, uh, when you touch them, to feel like they're similar. That way when you sew them back together, they'll sort of blend back into one piece and it'll feel like one piece, it'll look like one piece. If you don't have a sewing machine, don't worry, you can hand sew this. It's minimal sewing. So hand sewing will totally work. But this is a great one for fall. So cool, so fun, and I absolutely love it. All right, so here are the flannels that I thrifted for just a couple of bucks each. My plan is to use the red and the blue to create my mashup tee, and then use the red and black and the white and black to create my dress. They're all similar weights and similar textures, so this is perfect. I'm gonna start with the blue shirt, and my plan is to use the sleeves of this shirt for my new one. So you're gonna lay everything nice and flat, make sure your side seams are even, so that you can cut the front and the back at the same time. Now you can see I'm actually cutting really close to the collar and the center because I wanna use up as much of that sleeve as possible. Because again, I want like a drop shoulder, big oversized shirt. That's what I wanna create. So I'm gonna use up as much of both of them as I can. Again, I'm using the red one for the center and you can see I'm cutting as close to the sleeve as possible. That way when I merge the two of them together, I end up with, with like a much boxier, wider body. If you want something more tapered, you would basically do the opposite of what I just did and cut them each to be very narrow. Now, this is essentially what's gonna happen. I'm gonna fray all of the hems on everything. So I didn't have a lot of sort of real estate to play with on the red one because it's much shorter than the blue one. So I'm basically just cutting through my seam so that when I wash it, the red will fray on the bottom and I won't actually need to cut any length off. For right now, I'm just cutting the bottom of this so it will fray, but I'm not actually removing any length. My plan so far is to have an asymmetric hem, longer on the sides and shorter in the front. Now it's time to attach them. There's two ways you can do it. One is you lay it on the floor and you just pin it that way. The other is actually using your dress form. I have a dress form and for me this seemed a lot easier because I could get a sense of sort of proportions and shapes, but you can totally do it on the floor. I want all of my seams to be exposed. So you can see what I'm doing right now is I'm literally just taking the blue, I'm laying it on top of the red, and I'm pinning it in place. Everything is right side out, I'm not doing it face to face, I'm not hiding my seams, everything is gonna be fully exposed on the outside. I was playing around with the idea of adding other panels, I decided not to do it, but again, you can have as much fun with this and add as many little elements as you want. It's time to sew, and basically all I'm gonna do is sew these two pieces together. Simple straight stitch, and I'm doing it about an eighth of an inch in, that way when I wash it, there's about an eighth of an inch of fraying that can happen along all of the seams. So all you're gonna do is a simple straight stitch. If you want your seams exposed, you're gonna do it like this. If not, everything would be sewn face to face and then flipped inside out. Now here it is, this is where I was at, and I did not like the way the asymmetric hem looked once I tried it on. So I decided to cut it so that they're all the same length. So I've got this really cool mixed plaid shirt, but at least everything is the same length, which I very much like. Now, when I tried it on, the back of the shirt got tucked in my bra and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. So I decided to crop the back 
right across the back, which actually creates this really cool effect in the back. It's got this like peekaboo moment just in the back and the front is big and oversized. Throw it in the wash, let everything fray and you're good to go. Now it's time to work on my dress. So I know that this shirt needs to be taken in a little bit. So what I decided to do is just put it on inside out and sort of pin it on me so that I could get a sense of how much volume I wanted to take out of the shirt. I don't want it to be super tight, but I do want it to be a little bit more fitted. So you can do this on yourself or on a dress form, but basically you can either pin it and then sew it while it's pinned, or you can use the pins as a guide, which is what I did. And now I'm just kind of cutting out that excess to create two fresh seams that I will then sew back together. So basically I pinned it so I knew exactly where I was cutting it, cut it straight down the front, straight down the back, following the grid line so that everything would be nice and even. And then I just squared off my bottom so that eventually I can sew my skirt to it. Pin your side seams and then you're just gonna sew down this side seam, down this side seam, and you're good to go. This one is not having exposed seams. So this one is actually flipped inside out right now. I'm gonna sew it traditionally with all the seams hidden on the inside. And now basically my shirt is good, ready to go and it's time to move on to the skirt. So this is a large uh, flannel that I bought. I just bought an extra large flannel so I would have a lot of fabric to work with. And in order to get sort of access to all of my fabric where I could actually turn it into a skirt, you kind of have to deconstruct it. So I cut off my sleeves, then I looked like what else is holding it in place together? The collar was holding it in place, so I cut that and then the shoulder seams. Once I cut all of those elements, I ended up with like a big flat piece of fabric that I could actually cut and turn into a skirt. So I'm cutting open the side seams and the two front pieces will remain my fronts and the back piece will remain my back, but I need to sort of create an A-line shape. So what I did is I took my shirt so that I could see how wide I actually needed to make it. And right now I'm cutting from the hem straight up to the waist, going to the level where once I sew it, it will fit perfectly into the waist of my skirt. Now, remember that anytime you're using like old thrifted stuff, a, a lot of times it's like a little wonky, right? The right isn't even to the left, the seams are twisted and you can see that's what happened here. Everything is lined up the same way it is on the right, but the hems aren't lining up. That's okay, you gotta just be a little bit flexible and free with it. I cut this side and then in order to make them perfectly even, I folded it in half and I used my left side as a guide and I just cut them evenly. So again, be free, have some fun, don't be too serious. That's one reason that I really recommend using thrifted pieces because if you mess it up, who cares? It was like a buck. Now, I sewed up only about 12 inches of my side seams because I thought it would be cool to have little side slits. So you can see I've sewn up those side seams and now it's time to attach it to the bottom of my shirt. I'm gonna do a similar thing here where I'm gonna have exposed seams. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my shirt, which is unbuttoned and open, and I'm taking my quote unquote skirt, <laughs> which is unbuttoned and open, and I'm laying them one on top of the other. And I'm basically just pinning it exactly where I want it on my flannel shirt. Make sure to pin your button plackets on either side lined up perfectly. That way, once you put it back on, you can actually utilize all of those buttons. And now you're just gonna sew it. Again, I'm doing the same thing with the seam being exposed on the outside. So I'm giving myself about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Once it was done and I knew that I liked the placement, I could cut off the excess of my fabric. I left it on just in case I wanted to undo it, move it up, move it down, but it was good. So you're gonna cut it, throw it in the wash so it can fray a little bit and you're good to go. All right, my friends, that is it. If you guys have any questions, you can comment them down below. If you do this, please share it with me on social media. I love to see everything you guys can DM me or just like, tag me in your photos when you post them. I'd love to see what you guys do. It's at Orly Shani. And if you're new to the channel and you liked this video, I hope that you'll subscribe. Click the like button, share it with a friend. Um, that, that just goes such a long way. You have no idea, it really does help me. So, all right, you guys, I'm gonna model these for you, show you what they looked like on. I will see you beautiful people next week. Thanks for being here. I love you. Enjoy the fashion show. Come on, give me that, give me that.